Howdy folks, and welcome back to Making Fakemon! The show where I make a Fakemon region based around all the world's cultures all crumpled into one region. Now, it's been a while since my last episode, I'll admit. I was busy drawing Stickmen, I'm sure you can understand. But now I'm here with six new bug type designs for this Fakemon region. As the previous two episodes were about the early root bird and the early root rodent. If you want to see those two episodes, feel free to check them out, let me know what you think of them. And now this time we're on about some early root bugs. As I've mentioned in previous two episodes, Pokemon has made a pattern of each new Pokemon game always including, uh, I want to say a predictable type of Pokemon. You know, such as, you know, there's the three starters, fire, water and grass. There's usually the two box legendaries. And near the start of the game, there's always usually the early root, bird, rodent and bug type. These are like the early Pokemon what you usually catch before the first or second gym. And they usually rather stay with you for the whole journey, like your starter, or you use them whilst you can, but then they easily get replaceable when you just get access to, well, bigger and better Pokemon. I've tried my best to kind of mix around some concepts to make them more different and kind of subvert expectations when you just imagine an early root rodent or a bird. Sometimes you can imagine them being slightly just bland normal types. I've, I've tried my best to kind of make them at least a little bit more. So again, if you want to watch those, feel free to and let me know. But either way, today we're on about bug types. More specifically, Considi and Kidapilla. Although we'll get onto Kidapilla a little later. For now, let's talk about Considi. Considi is a ladybug. You don't need me to tell you that. It likes to just cling on trees and for some reason dance. Like, if you're in forests, you shouldn't play music too loud in case you'll get a swarm of Considi all dancing around you trying to get, get in on the groove. And it also always walks backwards. You might have noticed, but the eyes and mouth on its, well, what it looks like its face, is actually on its back. Its real face is always hidden. It never shows its real face. Hence its name, Considi. Conceal its identity, its ID. Considi. Plus, Considi sounds like the ladybug's uh, scientific name, Cochinellidae. Cochinellidae? Uh... Coxinility. Right, okay. So yeah, that's all what Coxinility is. I based it off the whole Asian lady beetle scare thing. As when I tell you ladybug, you usually imagine bright red and cute, but apparently there's an orange variant what isn't actually a ladybug, it's meant to be a lady beetle, although I'm pretty sure they are the same thing. And it's basically orange is the bad one, red is the good one? I think they're similar enough to not necessarily be a bad or a good one, but nevertheless, I'm pretty sure the orange one is actually an invasive species, what is wiping out the red one, it's something like that. So I like the idea of a ladybug concealing its face so you wouldn't know if it was the good or bad one until it evolved. Kind of like a wormpool evolving into Silcune or Cascune at random sort of thing. Although I didn't necessarily want to make an evil evolution plus a good evolution because, well, is there really an evil animal at the end of the day other than humans. But that's a completely different topic for a totally different thing. So anyway, yeah, I wanted to make a split evolution for Considi, what you couldn't tell what it would evolve into until after it evolved. Like, again, like Wormple. So in thinking of what two compelling ideas could I have as a split evolution line but also related to beetles, I thought, art. Fun little fact, although not ladybugs specifically, but some types of bugs are actually dried up and crushed and used in paint, paints, food dyes, fabric dyes, and things like that. And considering there's loads of different colours of ladybugs, I wanted to kind of, you know, mesh that all that into um, an artist bug. In fact, I wanted to actually make each of them have a different variant on a different colour, and depending on the different colour would depend on their, like, they'd have a signature move, and depending on their colour it would change the type. But I feel like that would have been too much for an early bug, uh, for an early bug, and, well, if there's already three of them, just making, like, six different colours, I feel like that would be a bit too much, but... In the future, I might do something like that with another different mod, who knows? Now, I struggled drawing this guy a lot, mainly because I, I didn't have much of an idea other than just artist bug, and I feel like next time I do a design like this, I probably should do at least a bit of planning and a bit of sketching. I do it sometimes, but sometimes I just kind of jump right into it, and I feel like this time it wasn't a good idea to just jump into it. And again, I feel like the fact that I'm doing this in pixel art. Now, most other um, YouTubers who, um, you know, make their own Fakemon region, they usually draw it in um, an actual style, like, their, well, their own style, or they try to replicate the Pokemon style. Amazingly, might, might I add. This one is pixel art, and I feel like a big reason why pixel art isn't always the best is when, when you're trying to make minute details, like, I'm trying to do big cartoon gloves, 
it's really hard to do that in pixel art without them looking sharp and blocky and awkward. I really struggled with that, and I feel like if I was to draw these in actual, in my own fully art style, not pixel art, I feel like it would be a lot easier for me to make them look a lot more fuller and not blocky, if that makes sense. So, so just imagine what they would look like if they were in an actual animated style or something like that. Just imagine it not looking t crap. But at the end of the day, I do like its design. Um, I don't know why I decided to specifically go noodle limb with rubber, um, big rubber gloves instead of um, the little nubs like Considi. I don't know why, but hey oh. I kind of imagined him, he needed to have hands so he could fashion uh, paint tools using the wood from the trees and stuff like that. Like he makes the little, you know, artist plate and a little paintbrush out of wood. You know, bugs use the things around them in the forest, so I thought that would be a fun little thing to do as well. And then I like to think, you know, they mush up berries and mix them with water to make their own paint. So, you know, very, very clever little bugs. So yes, this is Arty Beetle, the first evolution of Considi. Do you like it? I don't know if it needs a redesign or not, but for now I think I'm going to keep it. I feel like every region needs just an odd design every now and again anyway, right? Anywho, let's go on to the second evolution, the Chef Bug. But I thought I was going to do artist bugs. Well, I feel like, if you think about it, isn't cooking a form of art anyway? It depends how much you get into, I guess. But it, it, I, if you ask the chef, I'm sure they'd say, in some form, food is an art. It, I, I don't see it as any different as sculpt, sculpting some clay or drawing something on a sheet of paper. It's all art. Just this time you can eat it. Which some may argue is even better than regular art. So yeah, uh, this time, instead of carving out a paintbrush and a paint plate, he uh, fashions a uh, rolling pin and a wooden frying pan. I don't know how that works specifically, but I thought it was fun. And although earlier I did mention I didn't want a specific evil and good version, I did give this one more of an angry kind of look, just because some chefs can be angry. Let's, let's just leave it at that. Plus, the implication that he's got a frying pan kind of implies that, well, he rather fries bacon what I don't really want to think about in this kind of scenario. And I guess the more realistic option is that he scavenges and finds Fakemon eggs and fries them up, which I can imagine probably tastes delicious. He probably, again, he finds a bunch of spices and berries to all season it well, but, you know. In, in, you know what? Let's forget. No eggs. He, he fries up berries and seasonings and stuff like that. I'm sure that's... I mean, again, it's slightly, slightly scary, but that's what nature is, isn't it? Um, an idea I did have was his antennas being like salt and pepper shakers, but I thought I feel like that would have been a bit too much of a stretch. So I instead I went for the idea that um, I was going to make his antenna longer, so it made it look like a chef hat. But I, again, I feel like I felt like that was a bit too much, so I, I removed it slightly. But you know, and I made this one more red because the previous one was more orange. So you have the orange and red ladybug. So there you have it, the second split evolution, Arty Chef. Ah, uh, well, because well, both of them are artists. Uh, Arty Beetle, because, well, it's just an Arty Beetle, it's a Art Beetle. And, uh, Artificef is Art Artificial, because he's quote, it could, he could be, quote unquote, the fake one. And Chef, because, well, he's a chef, so Artificef. So, there you have it. That's the early root bug type. Now, although they don't necessarily follow the regular trend of, uh, bug, cocoon, flying bug, this next one is a little bit more in line with that. So this is Kidapilla, the kitty caterpillar. Kidapula is inspired by, I guess, just being a child and um, watching TV, reading books, and eating cereal. <laughs> Let me explain. I mean that in the sense of, when you're little, everything's just a lot flashy and brighter to try and get your attention, right? Everything's bright colours on TV, so you want to watch it. All the cereal mascots are all brightly coloured, so you buy it. And, well, I guess, you know, caterpillars are a very easy way to teach metamorphosis to children, because it's a... It's a caterpillar, a cocoon, and a butterfly. I feel like it's one of the most well-known, uh, at least bug, by, well, anyone, let alone young'uns. So Kidapilla was kind of inspired by just the concept of teaching children about metamorphosis, whilst also, I guess, being like a silly little mascot and stuff like that. And similar to Considi, I imagine this one dancing a lot. Not specifically looking for music, but just, you know, it always walks along, uh, you know, all the tree branches and trees and bushes and everything, just bobbing along to its own beat, you know, just being happy. It's like a cartoon, you know? I also like the little baby bonnet I popped on instead of, like, antenna. I thought that was really cute. And obviously all the baby colours. And when it eats enough berries, it secretes this liquid. It kind of sweats, but it's a very nice kind of sweat. It smells very nice, and most people enjoy um, using it as, like, um, a cologne, I think the name is, right? Spray what makes you smell good. Only problem with this is that you can't be too forceful in trying to collect it because caterpillars are very sensitive and can cry very easily. And not they don't just cry, 
they screech, and their screech can be heard for miles. It is almost deafening, and it is known to smash windows of like farmhouses, what you know, look after kid pillars. So yeah, now onto this evolution, the cocoon. <laughs> for those who don't know how a cocoon actually works, because I'm, you know, as, when we're little, I'm sure we all just imagine it. I guess tucking itself into a little bed and then just waking up the next morning as a beautiful butterfly. Sadly, that's not what a cocoon really is. So for those who don't know, a cocoon essentially dissolves the caterpillar into a slime and then reconstructs the caterpillar as a butterfly. That's what a cocoon does. And if, well, the cocoon doesn't do it itself, the caterpillar does, die, dissolves itself and the cocoon just protects it. But that's the act of it really. So I kind of wanted to mix that into the idea of um, a cocoon mon. I like the idea that you can see its body getting rearranged and rebuilt but in a safe, kitty kind of way. Although some people say when making Fakemon they should make it kid friendly because well, it's a Pokemon game, I'm not gonna really use that. I'm gonna make these Fakemon however I darn want to. If I wanna make some gruesome ones, trust me, I'm gonna make some gruesome ones. But for this one specifically, it's meant to be how, you know, to teach kids about metamorphism, so I thought I'd make it somewhat cutesy anyway. I also like the aesthetic of its ball pieces being, you know, like bubbling out, because I guess this is kind of a ground caterpillar anyway. I say it dances along in trees, but it can't really attach itself to twigs to go in the cocoon. It kind of needs to make itself into a cocoon on the ground. So I, get, I like the idea that these are like bouncy balls, but just help it protect itself when it like falls over inevitably. So yeah, this is Kakoopsie. Cocoon and oopsie because, well, it tumbles a lot and it looks a little bit, you know, disturbed and grossed out because of its inside getting all mushed around. Plus, it gets itself into a lot of accidents. It's kind of a daredevil. It likes to jump off things and test its limits, but yeah, I like to think that the cocoon is also just like one big bandage because it keeps, you know, scuffing itself up. It's it's gone from being a safe, um, simple child. Now it kind of likes, you know, the rough and tumble. It likes to tumble about and climb up stuff, you know, like a regular caterpillar, I guess, just with more edge. So anyway, let's hatch the cocoon. <laughs> now, an idea I had from almost the beginning of um, making a caterpillar evolution was I wanted there to be a skateboard. <laughs> that wasn't the original idea. The original idea was that it'd be a really tall uh, centipede with like hundreds of little like boxing gloves. But I decided against that because well, skateboard bug. Plus I like the idea of this somewhat being like a mascot bug. You know, like, I can imagine this being on like the boxes from cereal or something, being all radical and everything. Instead of a baby bonnet, you know, it's gonna have like a snapback hat. And despite it having wings, it doesn't really need them. It just uses its skateboard what it fashions out of its cocoon. Usually when butterflies hatch out of their cocoon, they don't really use anything with it, but I like the idea that this one crafts it into a somewhat of a skateboard. So yeah, I do like the idea that since Kidapilla does have um, a nice fragranted sweat, and I like the idea that um, the final evolution is somewhat of a mascot for certain brands, like I said, like cereal, some types of cologne and, you know, air fresheners or whatever. And also just, you know, teaching children about metamorphosis. I like the idea that in this world, I would argue the Kidapilla line is one of the most well-known lines of anyone. Just, you know, due to the marketing. I was also thinking of what types to make it, because I feel like bug type's obvious for the first two. I wanted, I was wondering fighting type maybe, because, well, it's a rough and tumble bug, and even though it does have wings, it doesn't necessarily use them to fly. It can do, but it just prefers to skate around. And I guess the closest thing to a skateboard type probably would be, like, like fighting maybe. But if not, I guess just bug, and I guess technically flying, because it's got wings. So yeah, this is Skidderfly. A mix between, well, I guess the original name would have been uh, Skidderpillar, because, well, Kidderpillar, Skidderpillar, it skids. And, well, Skillerpillar, because skills, you need skills. And then there's Skus for skateboard. And, of course, throw Butterfly in there, you get Skidderfly. Although I'm not sure if I like Skidderpillar more or not. Mm. Skidderfly for now. So there you have it. This episode's bug types. We've got Considi, Artabeetle, Artificef, Kidderpillar, Kakoopsie, and Skidderfly. Poof. Six Fakemon in one episode. I think that's a new record now. But anyway, yeah, do you like them? Do you not like them? Which one's your favorite? If you've got any ideas for anything what can like, perhaps make the designs look better, let me know. I kind of want to apologize if you're watching this when it first came out, because that means, well, it's been about a month since my last Fakemon video. As sad as it is to say, these videos aren't going to be as frequent, as in they're not going to be like one or two a week anymore as they used to be. Like I said, I've got a stickman project coming up now. I am being serious. But I'm still going to do these as much as I can, I'm just trying to balance this because this project is really important to me. But I also understand that making these fakey and well, talking to all of you guys in the comments is also really important. So thank you for all your support so far. I can't say for certain what we'll get next episode because, well, we've done the early birds 
early rodents and early bugs now, but I guess next time we're going to do some other early root Pokemon. Expect a watermelon, a fox, and a duck thing? Hmm. I hope you're excited to see those, and hopefully they're going to be out relatively soon. I can promise they're not going to be a month to come out anymore. Hopefully. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. Again, let me know what your favourites or least favourites, and, well, I'll see you all in a bit. Toodaloo.